Colossians uh, chapter 2. I want to begin at, at verse 1 this morning and read down to verse 7. So let's read uh, that together this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Colossians 2 verse 1 says, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have on your behalf and for those who are at Laodicea and for all those who have not personally seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself in whom are all hidden, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this so that no one will delude you with a persuasive argument. For even though I'm absent in body, nevertheless I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good discipline and the stability of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus in the Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed, and overflowing with gratitude. You know, Paul, he, he wanted these brethren to be encouraged, not just the brethren at Colossae, but, but those in Laodicea as well, those of whom he'd uh, never been with face to face. Uh, verse 2, uh, again, he says that their hearts may be encouraged. He says, having been knit together in, in, in love. He says that their hearts may be encouraged. Then he says, having been knit together in love. You know, what a beautiful phrase, right? Uh, brethren being knit together in love. You know, as I read that phrase, what comes to my mind is, is this truth that we as brethren, we absolutely need one another. You know, it's a shame that it, it sometimes takes tragedy or some deep hardship uh, for us to be reminded of this. You know, I, I couldn't help but think as I was reading this, just all that we've been through as a church over the last year and a half or so, and uh, just what a great blessing the local church is. You know, brethren in a geographic location, coming together, working together, worshiping together, um, loving one another, and acting in one another's best uh, spiritual interest. Uh, I talked to our, our sister Nell Parkheiser for uh, a few minutes tonight, as, as yesterday was her birthday, and she was telling me all the calls and all the cards and all that she received and just what uh, a blessing her brethren at, at Kenwood is. And we were just talking about how blessed we are to have uh, one another. And it, it is just so true. She told me she got like 17 cards today or something. Just absolutely wonderful. Just the, the best people on earth. But, the, but just God's people working together, being together. What, what, a, what a great blessing that is. You know, sometimes I, I think we act as if um, church is, is, is something we go to. It's somewhere we go, as opposed to who we are. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And we're to work together. We're to be united and, and knit together in love. And here's what that means. You know, I, I need to know you. And you need to know me. You know, in a world where we're constantly coming and going, so many blessings that, that make independence really easy for us. That, that phrase, knit together, I think implies familiarity. And I'm just proposing that, that I can do better, and I suspect you can as well. We need to be more intentional about, by way of knowing one another, you would agree, right? And then and only then will we be capable of meeting one another's needs, love, being knitted together, in love, we should view one another, brethren, as a source of strength. So let's be more intentional about knowing one another. And I promise you will find these relationships in Christ as a great source of encouragement. You know, he goes on to say in the latter uh, part of verse 2, he says, Been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery. That is Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The mystery of God, he says, is Christ himself. You know, we can fully know God in Christ. Certainly for a time, Christ was a mystery in the sense that he had not been fully revealed, but now he has, in true knowledge and true wisdom, the found in Christ. It's in Christ where we find redemption. In Christ, we have hope. We have life. True wisdom and knowledge, brethren, are not found in this world. They are found in Christ. Which, brethren, does it not stand to reason? Should we not, as a local church, should we not be solely focused on proclaiming and communicating the word of Christ? Just a thought. You know, Paul commends these brethren in verse 5 for their good discipline, their stability, and their faith in Christ. In verse 6, he implores them to walk in Christ. But I want us to focus on verse 7 as we close. He says, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, 
as they had been instructed. I love that phrase, firmly rooted, being built up. You know, it's this beautiful picture of stability. You know, brethren, this world is full of problems. Things are up and they're down. What we need is something to hold on to when the wind blows, when the storms rage. Brethren, Jesus Christ, our Lord, he is that for us. His word is that for us. As we walk in Christ, we establish our faith as, as, as we listen to the things that have been taught from his word, as we obey them. You know, as a result of all that Jesus has done, has doing, and will do for us, brethren, we ought to overflow with gratitude. Verse 7 again, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed, and overflowing with gratitude. Brethren, let's be thankful. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful for another day in your word. Father, we're thankful for answered prayers. Father, we're thankful for Tanya and Alan's sister-in-law. that She is improving with her bout with COVID. We pray that that would continue, Father, to be your will. Father, we're thankful that our, our brother Bill's son is home from the hospital and doing better. Father, we're thankful for the answered prayers on our sister Marion's behalf. That she's out of the hospital and doing better. And Father, we continue to pray for all of those who continue to Go through cancer treatments. We especially ask you to be with our sister Jenny right now as she faces an uphill battle, Father, and all the various things that come with her treatments. Father, we pray that you'd be with Savannah as she's having a hard time right now. Father, bless her and be with Sonny and Lee and Libby and Dave and the families they care for her, Father. Give them peace. Give them strength, Father. It's, this is so difficult. And Father, we ask that you would be with all of those who are struggling struggling with various issues in their life, Father, that you would be with them, that you would bless them, and be with those who've lost loved ones. And Father, we're just so thankful that you are our God, that you hear our prayers, that you answer our prayers, that you care for us. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray.